Hi folks, Ray Gianelli here. And today I wanna to go over a problem I found with a Parasound HCA 1000A amplifier I picked up on eBay. The seller said the only problem with it was that the right channel overload LED stayed illuminated. And uh, when I got it here, he was true to his word. That was the only problem I found with the amp. Now I bought it because the schematic indicated that it was, wasn't a complicated circuit and I figured it would be a simple fix. You'd think I'd know better by now. But anyhow, I'm going to walk you through the schematic and then we're going to look at the amp. I'm going to show you what I think the problem is and then we're going to find out if that's really the case. So give me just a moment please. Okay, so here's the section of the schematic we want to look at. The right channel overload indicator is right here. So if we trace that back, we'll find that these are the two common points. What we want to look at is going to be right here. That comes from the collector of this transistor, Q3. Okay, now it's getting its signal from the output stage of the amplifier and then it goes into the base here. And what I determined after looking at this was what I measured across this 100k resistor in each channel. This measured about 99k in circuit which is fine but this was registering closer and it varied somewhere between 40 and 60k. Now Resistors like these, I believe they're metal film, rarely if ever drift. Carbon composition resistors can drift uh, if they're exposed to excessive current or temperature, but metal films rarely do and they never drift down. They always drift in the upward direction. So I knew there was some other problem. And um, this amp's a bear to take it apart. It's a very well-designed amp designed by John Curl, but it wasn't really made with servicing in mind. So let me show you what I found, and we're going to see if we can correct that. Okay, so here we are looking at the circuit board of the amp. Now, this is the left channel, which is the good channel. And if you look... Let's see. We have about 96, 97 K across that 100 K resistor. And I lifted the one here and I had pulled the transistor out thinking there might have been a uh, leakage path through the transistor, but the transistor checked good. And if we look here, we can see we have 100 K. That's a good resistor. Certainly can't complain about that. So if the transistor was good, that was in right here, and it was, then what's the problem? Well, here's what I found. We've all heard about bonding glue that can become corrosive. Um, there are many cases of this in the Sansui and uh, Yamaha amps that were built in the 70s and 80s. But something else that can happen to some adhesives over time is they can actually become conductive. Now, if you look over here at this capacitor, you can see, and I'll just move the camera a little bit, that there's some glue right around here. And if I just touch the glue with the probes in ohm meter range, you can see we got 1.3 meg ohm. Now the rest of the circuit board doesn't do this, but the glue does. What I determined as is that um, even when you've removed the adhesive, if I go right here on the other channel, you can see the same thing. We got 400, 490K. So what I'm going to do is we're going to clean the board off using some uh, anhydrous alcohol, some high purity stuff here, and we're going to see if that makes a difference. So let me get a couple Q-tips here. Right. 
Now let's see if we can make a difference. Well, we got some stuff off of there. Okay, I'm going to measure that again and we'll see if it helped. Okay. Well, now we're getting five big. I think when the rest of the alcohol evaporates, it may take care of that. Yeah, we're getting now around 20 meg. We're concerned it hasn't gone all the way down. Okay. Even though I didn't see any on the other side of the board, I think what I'm going to do is clean that as well. So let me just give this one more good wipe. By the way, that glue came from where this capacitor was installed. Interestingly, if I take that same capacitor that I pulled out, even though I cleaned the glue off of it, it exhibited the same phenomenon. Let me see if it'll still do that. Yeah. Even though I, w I cleaned the glue off of it, I didn't wipe this down. And uh, okay, maybe I did wipe that down. Yeah, I might have wiped that down this morning. Anyhow. I'm going to shut the camera off, clean the other side of the board, and then we're going to come back and see what we get. Okay, I've got both sides of the board cleaned out, and I soldered the components back in. So let's see what we measure now. Put that in the screen without any glare on it. And now when we go across that 100K resistor, we get 98.9K. So I believe this is going to work. I'm going to reassemble this and we're going to test it and see what we get. Okay, I've got the amplifier reassembled and we're going to check and see if our, if our current overload LED comes on. Now, this is the AC line, this is standby and normal, protect, outer protect. And before, this current overload LED came on and stayed on. So let's turn the amplifier on and see what we get. Okay, it's in standby, it's out of standby, we have no overload LEDs. Okay, so there you have it. The problem was that the bonding glue that's put in to hold larger components into place for the wave soldering or shipping process had become conductive over time. This is fairly unusual. Usually this bonding glue becomes corrosive. But occasionally, and honestly I've only seen this one other time in an Onkyo amplifier I was working on, they had glued a wire to the um, printed circuit board on the foil side and it had become conductive and it was allowing leakage currents to go into the differential amplifier on the front end and this caused all kinds of offset everywhere in the circuit because with direct coupled amps if you have voltage upsets they tend to just propagate all throughout the entire output stage so anyhow I just wanted to make this video to point out that there are very unusual things that can happen you have to be aware of 
glue is one of them, just one of many. It takes a long time to gain experience in this, and these little 15 minute videos I hope don't give you the wrong idea because I can spend literally hours chasing these troubles down. But I want to walk you through the salient points of the troubleshooting process so you can see what was successful, okay? So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I like giving back to the community that has given me so much. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.